I can't get enough of you. Subscribe, like, and share. Getting into his car, Taejun headed to the airport, contemplating the perfect timing to send the email of the photos and video files from the counselor to Soeun. Before leaving, at the airport, Hiwook and Choi Hyunji appeared to keep their distance from each other. However, after finishing their business in Japan and parting ways with the headhunter, they walked arm in arm to the hotel. The next day, they checked out and kissed in front of the hotel. Everything was going according to plan. Now, all Taejun had to do was send these files anonymously to Han Soeun. He had even thought of the message. A man who had been secretly in love with Choi Hyunji had been watching them and had hired someone to take these photos. Soeun, who couldn't even assert herself properly with her boyfriend, but only showed pride in front of Taejun, would find this unbearable. Though everything was planned, pressing the send button was not easy. Imagining the truth that Soeun would find out, the heartbreak she would endure, and the shock she would experience made Taejun feel uneasy. But was he going to do nothing? He couldn't. On the way, he received a notification from the Japanese headhunter about failing to recruit the talent. This, too, was expected. Now all that remained was to meet Hiwook and Hyunji at the airport, terminate their contract, and settle the travel expenses. Mr. CEO, we have arrived at the airport. Oh, okay, you can go now. Leave the car behind. Yes, Mr. CEO, have a good day. I should focus on finishing this job first. The plane where Yang Waiwook and Choi Hyunjin had boarded should arrive here soon. Upon arriving at the airport, Taejun walked with wide strides. The flight information board showed that the plane carrying Hiwook and Hyunji had landed. Taejun pulled out his phone to contact Hiwook. But just as he was about to press the call button, he unexpectedly saw Han Soeun in the arrival area. Taejun's fingers halted. He put his phone back into his pocket. Having contacted Yeolgia Law Firm, a staff member informed her of Hiwook's return schedule. Soeun arrived at the airport in time to meet him. She needed to know if Hiwook was aware of his sister's blood type and if he had manipulated things to have Soeun donate her organ. Of course, he could claim ignorance. If he said he didn't know, she would demand the truth, even if it meant fighting with Hijin. After all, as his fiance, he should grant her this request. But what if he admitted knowing? Should she break up and demand compensation? Can she break up? Can she fight a lawyer and win? She recalled a conversation between Hiwook and Malhi in the hospital a few days ago. You're surrounded by such pretty and smart girls. They have parents who are alive and well and come from good families. Girls with good families and parents wouldn't donate organs to our mom. I'm the sinner. I got a liver at the cost of my son's future. Thinking back on this made her feel nauseous. If all of this was a scheme by Hiwook's family, what about me? What should I do now? Frightened, she considered turning back. No, I must correct this wrong. She couldn't reclaim the organ already given, but she could protect her dignity. She decided to handle things wisely for her future. Don't dwell on what's already given, focus on getting better. Demand an apology. Receive a proper apology and forgive. Then get married and be treated well. Assert her rights. That seemed like the best way. As Soeun collected her thoughts and was about to turn away, the automatic doors of the arrival hall opened. She saw Hiwook and Hyunji walking in, arms linked. She was certain Hyunji saw her. Hyunji immediately pulled Hiwook's arm. Hiwook turned to her with a smile, and Hyunji seized the opportunity to kiss him. People are watching. Hiwook chuckled, not matching his usual composed voice. Oh, I always like it. Hiwook replied playfully, trying to cheer up a pouting Hyunji. Pleased with his response, Hyunji asked, So, when are you breaking up with Han Soeun? Her voice was loud enough to be heard. Appa, I'm serious. Do it properly. Tomorrow. I'll sort everything out tomorrow. 
Satisfied with his answer, Hyunji stood on her tiptoes and kissed Hee-wook's cheek. Hee-wook reciprocated, kissing her cheek. A few steps away from a position where she could see Hee-wook's face turn toward Hyunji, Seon trembled with shock and anger. Her knuckles turned white from clenching her fists. The blood vessels in her eyes seemed ready to burst. Taejun watched Seon, and then Hee-wook and Hyunji in turn. Thanks to Hyunji's public display at the airport, things had become easier. Though they had been cautious before leaving, it seemed their relationship had progressed significantly in Japan. Now that Seon had seen the decisive scene with her own eyes, there was no need for Taejun to do more. Without needing to send an anonymous email, he could successfully separate Hee-wook and Seon. While the feeling was gratifying, Watching Seon suffer was difficult to bear. Taejun couldn't take his eyes off her. Earlier, she had been trembling slightly, but after seeing Hee-wook and Hyunji together, her whole body shook violently. Did she already suspect something? Did she come to confirm her doubts with her own eyes? Hee-wook and Hyunji were heading towards the airport exit, completely oblivious to Seon's presence. A tense moment for any observer. Soon, hesitating briefly while looking into her bag, pulled out something white and blunt. Taejun, who had been watching her closely, felt a shiver run down his spine. As Soon started striding towards Hee-wook with determination, Taejun moved swiftly. Taejun grabbed her arm and turned her around. Soon panted as she faced Taejun, recognizing him. Her eyes flared with anger as if to say he was the least of her concerns. What do you want? Why? Chief Han, please wait a moment. Trying to stay calm and gentle, Taejun tried to reason with her. Soon pulled her arm away, shouting with force. Let me go. Why are you doing this all of the sudden? Sure, be quiet. People began to watch. Let me go now. Trying to remain composed, Taejun waited until he confirmed Hee-wook and Hyunji had left the airport before releasing her. Miss Han, please calm down. Put that thing in your hand back in your bag. Why should I? What's your problem? Ah, that's dangerous. What's this? What is this? Soon angrily shoved the item in her hand towards Taejun's face. With a swift dodge, Taejun saw clearly. If the security guards come and see that you have a... Oh. What he thought was a weapon was just a crumpled tissue. Han Soon is different. She wouldn't chase someone with a knife over a grudge. Taejun felt like he had been hit on the back of the head. Always composed and calculating, Kim Taejun had lost his judgment for the first time. After a brief struggle, they eventually left the airport. Hee-wook and Hyunji were gone. Why were you going to throw that tissue? Because it's mine. No, I mean, what was the reason behind it? Because I used it to wipe my tears. So I was going to throw it after using it. I, I didn't want to cry in front of everyone. Soon replied, seething with anger. While Soon fumed for missing Hee-wook, she asked, still clenching her teeth. What are you doing here? Soon narrowed her eyes, looking at Taejun with disbelief. Suspecting he had followed her, her piercing gaze made Taejun break out in a cold sweat. I went to Taiwan for a quick trip. To eat beef noodles. Yeah, I always do things like that. Sometimes I fly to Naples just to eat pizza. Oh God. As he spoke, Taejun couldn't understand why he was making such excuses. Taejun took Soon back to his car. Soon was quiet. Earlier, she had been trembling and seemed barely able to breathe upon seeing Hee-wook and Hyunji together. Now, she looked as if she had lost all emotions. I'm sorry. If I hadn't stopped you, you could have resolved it. I shouldn't have jumped to conclusions and made a scene like that in the airport. It was my fault. Taejun apologized after a long silence. Are you really okay? Yes, I'm okay. Soon answered politely, 
though she wasn't okay. Meeting Taejun now felt like a relief. She had come to confront Hewuk about knowing Heejin's blood type, but ended up facing a more shocking truth. Her thoughts and feelings were in turmoil. Had she confronted Hewuk directly, she might have ended up crying and babbling incoherently. She needed time to calm down and think things through, even though she felt weak. But you don't have any luggage. So Eun, looking out the window, asked blankly, you said you went to Taiwan. I went for a quick meal, so I traveled light. Taejun replied without looking at her. It didn't sound convincing, but Soon didn't care. She was too drained to bother. Taejun had kindly offered to take her home, and she wanted to take advantage of that kindness. The car started quietly. Scenes outside the window quickly passed by. As the old scenery vanished, new views replaced them. The speeding car seemed to urge her to get a grip and start anew. Looking back, it was foolish. The relationship, the proposal, meeting the families, and preparing for the wedding all happened too quickly. She got swept away by the whirlwind of seemingly free kindness. But it wasn't free. Having given everything so foolishly, she endured, afraid of being abandoned. She convinced herself she wasn't being used, even though she was. By the time she reached her house, the world outside was getting dark. After parking, Taejun spoke cautiously. This is a first for me, so I'm not sure what to do. But if you need someone to help you sort out any thoughts you're having, I'll be here. Soon's eyes welled up again with transparent tears. She tried hard not to cry, forcing herself to stay strong. A godlike superior offering to stay with her. There was a desire to lean on someone who penetrated her weakened heart. But she couldn't use her godlike superior as an emotional outlet. More importantly, she didn't want to feel indebted or grateful to him. All her energy for expressing emotions had been depleted. Despite being thankful for Taejun's kindness, Soon declined. It's okay. I'm a little tired. Why is this so hard? I feel sad but grateful. I, I don't know what's going to happen next. Perhaps she would regret this tomorrow when she would have to face life again with renewed vigor. She had been stern with a godlike superior. Taejun replied, that man. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. I've learned too much to just ignore it. I can't help but worry now. I got too involved already. You can't possibly know my past or my regrets. You don't know anything about it, Mr. CEO. You can't understand what I gave to Yang Hiwuk. Feeling sorry for wanting to discuss more with Taejun, Soon strengthened her voice to draw a line. My biggest regret and what I foolishly gave away. He doesn't know anything about it. I don't want to involve someone who doesn't know what happened to me in all of this. Have you ever gone through rough times in your life? His eyes widened briefly. Those beautiful eyes, as if they had never known hardship, suddenly looked innocent. His reaction suggested that she had hit a nerve. Who helped you move on back then? I'm not sure. I don't usually have much time to think of the past. Then, did you like an idol or some kind of celebrity? Why would I like something like that? Exactly. You wouldn't understand. During her school days, celebrities who comforted ordinary, aimless friends by saying, you are a precious person, or you are a lovely person, became idols. Even when those idols caused scandals or behaved recklessly, friends couldn't easily cut them off. They claimed their idols would never do such things. People understand only as much as they have experienced. Now, she could understand those feelings she once couldn't. Yang Hiwuk was the first person to enter Soeun's lackluster life. Excuse me, could I get your contact number? Do you always sit here? You caught my eye right away. You are exactly my type of woman. He was the first person to make me feel like someone special. Because of him, she came to love his world. There was so much love and sincerity that she couldn't think otherwise. Before him, I have never felt the love of someone else, 
and he was the first to tell me that I was beautiful and lovely. It was such an unshakable belief. A belief so unshakable it was dangerous. Thanks to him I fell in love with my new life next to him. I loved him with all my heart and soul. I was so happy because of that. You won't be able to understand. Because a person only understands as much as they experience in life. Soon forced a smile and bid him farewell. Thank you for giving me a ride, Mr. CEO. Goodbye. Turning away, she hurriedly opened the car door and ran inside her house.